Dear listeners, good morning and welcome to Comme d'Archi, season one of Summer, the podcast that opens the doors to the fascinating world of architecture. For newcomers, let me introduce myself. I'm the spokesperson of Anne-Charlotte Despont, PhD in History of Architecture, published author, head of a communication and development agency based in Paris, France, dedicated to architecture. Let's meet every week to discuss culture and architecture with specialists and learn how to look at projects through a context and diversity lens. To offer you the best content, Philippe Henry, sound engineer, is at the technical helm of the podcast. Thank you for being with me today, and now it's time for talent. Bienvenue dans Comme d'Archi. Today in this Comme d'Archi podcast number 16, I decided to tell you about the Maison Lafitte Castle, one of the most beautiful emblem of French classicism. I'll soon explain why. But first, a few facts about Maison Lafitte. Nowadays, Maison Lafitte is still referred to as the French capital city of horses. Why is that? Because of the importance of the horse races that took place there from the 19th century onwards. Note that its race course is nowadays threatened. The small town is located northwest of Paris, not far from Versailles, and close to the force of Saint-Germain-en-Laye, another royal town near Paris. It has nearly 24,000 inhabitants. It is still a pleasant place to live, despite soaring property prices. Although its origins are Gallo-Roman, Maison Lafitte, or rather Maison sur Seine at the time, took off as early as the 11th century in the form of a fiefdom. But it was not until much later in the 17th century that the master of the seigneury, René de Longueuil, who had responsibilities in the Parliament of Paris, decided to build a large castle to receive the king. The idea was to capture the attention of the monarch during his hunts in the forest of Saint-Germain-en-Laye. Immediately after the construction of the castle, René de Longueuil became intendant of finances. Related to the castle's construction or not, What I know is that the king, who was none other than Louis XIV, slept there only one night at the end of a hunt. Is that all? Well, back then, everything was slower, and every event meant a lot. Today, we perceive the magnificence very differently. But no doubt, this past splendor cost a much lower price than our excessive contemporary consumption. And what a pleasure to contemplate its constructive intelligence. In any case, François Mansart, great-uncle of the Versailles architect Jules Ardouin Mansart, designed and then built from 1642 to 1650 the masterpiece that would serve as inspiration for his nephew for Versailles. The Château de Maison was built by an impressive number of tradesmen. From the master mason to the builder, from the digger to the roofer, from the ironmonger to the gilder, from the plumber to the fountain man, each one brought his stone to the building to dig earthen, pave, cut, raise, saw, assemble, cover under the authority of the architect. The Château de Maison has known prestigious owners and guests, whether they were kings or princes, emperors or marshals, but also writers or thinkers such as Voltaire, Madame de Stal, or Benjamin Constant. It is the first large open castle with a central vestibule. As the medieval castle fades away, the modern castle is born. Staged in its domain, the Château de Maison belongs to a time when classical and Baroque aesthetics coexisted. If the classical order predominates by a whole play of balance and symmetry between empty and full, by references borrowed from the vocabulary of ancient architecture, the Baroque is nevertheless present by multiple winks. Illusions, trompe l'œil, art of appearing. The splendor of the monument was underlined by Jean-Jacques Blondel, professor of the Royal Academy of Architecture at the end of the 17th century, who paid a tribute to François Mansart. I quote, We dare to say it here. Nobody before him or since him has pushed this magic of architecture so far. What admiration, what charm, aren't we in love with the appearance of this masterpiece? But also, it is by the thoughtful study of this admirable work that we have learned. We admire the solidity without weight the precision of the device without dryness, the expression of the profiles, the perfect union of architecture and sculpture, the great proportion of the attic with the facades. End of quote. In the center, the fence is replaced by a ditch, the space thus created clearing the view. The multiple protrusions of the dwelling make you forget that it is compacted, a masterpiece that forebodes numerous perspectives, 
in classical European architecture. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to tune in to our previous content on Instagram at Comdarchi Podcast. If you like it, make sure to promote the podcast by giving it five stars on Apple Podcast and adding a comment or on any of your favorite podcast platforms. And don't forget to subscribe and listen to all of our episodes for free. See you soon. And until then, take care of yourself.